What's up everyone? Heather here. This is the best place for you if you are an entrepreneur, a content creator, a coach, whatever that may be, and you are looking for marketing advice when it comes to Pinterest. Today's video, we're chatting all about conversion campaigns. So if you're ready for that, let's dive right in. Welcome back to another week of your Pinterest marketing department. My name is Heather Varis and I run a Pinterest marketing agency and education business where I help entrepreneurs and content creators like you to get more traffic to your blog posts, your videos, your digital products, physical products even, whatever that may look like for you and help you to build your email list and your sales. So this week's video, we're talking all about conversion campaigns for promoted pins. I've got my notes here on my iPad and I'm ready to dive in. So a lot of you have been watching my traffic promoted pin video. That video seems to be growing quite well. So I figured it was high time that I actually create a video all about conversion campaigns instead. So today I'm just going to dive into the different types of campaigns that you can run. And then we're going to talk about specifically conversion campaigns, why these are so great, how you can use them, who can use them, how to bid, how to break down your campaign to find out whether or not it's actually working or not, and more. So let's dive right in. We're going to start right at the top with the different kinds of campaigns that you can run and how they're built. So the very first type of campaign that you can run on Pinterest is an awareness campaign. A brand awareness campaign is a pay per thousand impressions for billing. And essentially it is just driving you awareness. It's there's really no rhyme or reason why or what someone's going to do after they click on your content or they may not even click on it at all because it's an awareness campaign. Typically these are used by big box retailers to bring attention to their brands. I would not suggest this type of campaign for a small content creator, course creator, digital product seller like the people who watch my channel like you. The next one is a video campaign and you are billed on impressions. So video campaigns are built on impressions per thousand. Um, it's simply that you have a video on as your pin, as your promoted pin. And there's a little caveat with this. When Pinterest has not seasoned its users to uh, click on videos, so you have to, when you click on the video in the feed, it actually pauses the video. And then you have to click on it again to actually go through to the next screen. So. Make sure you're thinking about that when you're creating a video for an ad, if you choose to do a video campaign. Now you can use videos as promoted pins for any type of campaign. It's just a video campaign specifically, you're paid per thousand impressions. And then the little nugget for you is just know that your video, you may have to um, film it in a way where people are okay to pause it. Now, the next one is catalog campaigns. These are, again, I, I envision these for big box retailers or at least stores with thousands of SKUs on hand because of the way that you have to actually upload your merchandise to the platform and go through that process. It's not necessarily something that I would do for small fish like us. Now, the next two I would recommend running for anyone that is a course creator, content um, creator, anything like that, digital, small online business, or even if you have a physical store and you also have an online shop, like that kind of setup. First is the traffic campaigns. Uh, those are built by click. So anytime someone actually clicks on your, your pin, you are billed for that. So if you have a $50 per, per day budget and no one's clicking on your pin, Pinterest isn't going to spend your money. Okay. So you have to optimize based on that. And if you're interested in watching a traffic campaign for promoted pins, click somewhere up here. There will be a tag for that. And you can watch my original video all about traffic campaigns down to the type of campaign that we're talking about in today's video. And that's conversion campaigns. Conversion campaigns are built by impressions. So every thousand impressions you're built. So if someone sees your pin, but they never actually take action on it, you're still billed. So you're going to want to make sure 
that you are optimizing and actually getting people to click on your pin. Now, now that you know the type of campaigns, let's actually dive into why you would use a conversion campaign and how you can actually get this going. So you're going to use a conversion campaign if you want to um, optimize for three different events. You can optimize for these three events. Sign up, check out, and add to cart. So if you want to actually drive a conversion on your website and optimize your campaign based on that conversion, then a conversion campaign may be good for you. So if you're building an email list or if you're selling a product, like in my instance, in the conversion campaign I'm gonna show you today in the computer, I am selling a course. I'm selling my pin profit plan course. I have a webinar funnel set up that I'm driving traffic to right now. And I have been working to get the 50 conversions on my tag in seven days. So that's what you're gonna wanna look for before you just start a conversion campaign. Is you're gonna wanna have 50 conversions on your tag. It doesn't matter what they are. It can be, convert, it can be um, signups, add to carts, or checkouts. It doesn't matter what of which of those they are. It can be a mix or all of one. And that will give Pinterest enough information about your audience so they can actually optimize in the algorithm properly. So conversion campaigns are great for actually driving conversions to your site in your store, whatever that may be. Conversion campaign bids are a little bit different than a traffic campaign bid. In my traffic video, I talked about how you can bid, just start with a really low bid. It doesn't matter. Um, I usually start all of my traffic campaigns off at about 25 cents per click is what I would like to pay. And then Pinterest is going to optimize for that or oftentimes it's actually less than that. Now for conversion campaigns, you actually have to bid based on a multiplier. The average multiplier that the Pinterest ad reps will give you is 10 to 20 times per day, right? But you're like, what is the 10 to 20 times? Your budget needs to be 10 to 20 times what you're willing to pay on your bid. So your CPA bid on a conversion campaign is what you would like to pay for the conversion. So let's just say, for example, we're running a conversion campaign to an email list signup. I want to pay a dollar per day for my email list signups. That means I need to bid 10 to 20 times more than that for my daily budget. So if I'm bidding a dollar per day and I'm doing 10 times a day for my budget, my budget needs to be $10 a day. So now that you have that in mind, you need to understand how much an email address is worth to you or how much in your profit margin you can stand to lose if the bid per day that you're actually getting once you start your conversion campaign, if it eats into that profit, how much are you willing to pay? The next thing I want to talk about is attribution windows. Conversion campaigns run on an attribution window. You need to be thinking about this when you set up your campaign. That way, when your reporting comes in and you're actually looking at the reporting and judging whether or not your campaign did well or not, within a certain certain time frame you have this attribution window set okay so an attribution window is basically on pinterest the standard one is 30 30 30. it's 30 day click 30 day engagement 30 day view now you can get as crazy as 111 777 i've seen in the reporting 60 60 60 you're gonna to wanna to think about your attribution window and how long it actually takes you to convert a customer once they click on your pin. So as soon as they click on your pin and they land on your website, how long does it take you to convert them? This is going to play a big role in how well your conversion campaign does based on your own judgment. Now, if, a, if I know that a client comes through and it takes them 30 days to convert, and I have my conversion, my attribution window set up to 777, that campaign's not gonna look like it did very well. Because from at face value, there aren't any conversions in the 777, but when I look at 30, 30, 30, there's a crap ton of conversions, okay? So make sure you're judging your conversion 
your conversions based on your attribution window and how long it actually takes someone to convert. Now, if you're using Google Analytics to judge all of your, your conversions and everything, you are gonna want to use the 111. So on Pinterest and on Google Analytics, it's 111. So it's the very last click, essentially. So keep that in mind as well if you're using Google Analytics to judge your data. Let's talk about optimization because this is something that I get asked a lot um, in, my in the comments on my last video. I actually got asked a handful of times. I've gotten emails and all the things and all the places. So how do you optimize your ad? If, it's, if you need some troubleshooting, we're gonna talk about that next, but if your ad is doing really well and you're looking to actually optimize it and grow your budget, scale your campaign, then you are going to look at your campaign every three to four days and start increasing your budget and your CPA every three to four days. Now, I don't want you to increase your CPA. I, I like to stick around the 9% mark. You may, if you talk to a Pinterest ads rep or another Pinterest expert, you may get other advice, but all of my clients and all of my own ads we only increase the CPA by 9% every three to four days. Now that is the bid, that's what you're paying for your conversion, for your email list sign up, right? So 9% every three days, and then depending on how much I can withstand in my budget, I go ahead and increase my daily budget, my daily spend by upwards of 25%. Now I, I like to keep it in line with the 10 to 20% multiplier. So I like to take a look at the numbers, take a look at the daily CP, the CPA I'm doing and the daily budget. And when I increase those, I like for those to increase equally. So as long as I'm staying within the 10 to 20% and my campaign is still performing, it's still getting me signups at the cost I would like, I'm getting a ROAS at the, infer, like at the amount I would like, then I will continue to inch that up. Now, Troubleshooting is a little bit different. If you are needing troubleshooting advice, this might be for you, even if you're running a traffic campaign. So if your ads were rejected, I get this question all the time. My ad was rejected, what do I do? Depends on the rejection reason. However, the most common reason is a landing page. Your landing page, um, for whatever reason, Pinterest didn't like it. A lot of times a bot is the one coming in and accepting or rejecting and you have to submit a ticket to have a person manually review the page. If you submit your pin two to three times and the bot rejects it two to three times, go ahead and submit a ticket. Make sure you're paying attention to this every single day because it could, it could get rejected and then you submit it for approval and then it gets approved right away. So make sure you're in the platform if you're ad gets rejected and you're paying attention so you actually get your campaign going and it doesn't take days. Now if you do submit a ticket that could take a few days 24 to 48 hours on average. All right the next question I get quite often is my ad isn't spending what do I do? This is going to be highly dependent upon what you have going on in your ad right in your campaign. So if your click-through rate is is sucking chances are that's probably why your ad isn't delivering or it's just not yeah it's not delivering essentially that's what it comes down to so your click-through rate is a big part of your delivery for both traffic and conversion campaigns if your click-through rate is low like below 0.50 percent then Pinterest isn't delivering your ad because people aren't interacting with it they're not clicking on it. If they do click on it, it's not very often. Um, it's just not doing well in the feed. So chances are you probably need to start off with evaluating why people aren't clicking on your pin and getting your click through rate up. Um, so that would be your first line of defense would be to try a new image. Once you try a new image, give it three to four days and see what happens at that point. Um, if you have an, an ad in the ad group that is just one image is really low 
a really low click-through rate and all the others are pretty high, then turn off the one that's not performing because it can drag your campaign down. Now, if you aren't hitting your budget and you're getting clicks, you may need to adjust your targeting. So if your click-through rate is, is lower or you're just, you're getting some clicks, but it's not, Pinterest isn't spending your daily budget, then you probably need to start by changing your targeting or adjusting your targeting first. Give it a three or four day time frame, and then judge it again. Go back and look at it again. If the target adjustments don't work, then you may need to adjust your budget itself. You may not have given Pinterest enough money to spend to optimize your ad in the algorithm. You may be getting beat out on the bidding floor and that may be why Pinterest isn't spending your money. So now the last troubleshooting reason is actually a pretty good one, but I still see clients running into this and I run into this as well. Um, if you're maxing out your daily budget, then you need to increase your daily budget. You're, you need to scale it. So I have actually seen this with clients where we will max out their daily budget before the day is even over. So that you're, t you're seeing from Pinterest that they are going out and they're finding people to click on your pin, then it just stops, stops dead in the water. You have to increase your daily budget to keep it going. So try increasing your daily budget by 15 to 25% to start and just see over the next three to four days if it starts spending again. That is everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to conversion campaigns. So now we're gonna actually jump into the computer and I'm gonna show you how to set up a conversion campaign. I actually need to set one up for my own business, which is why I'm going to go ahead and show you what's going on. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. We're in my Pinterest account and I'm gonna show you just really quick how to set up that conversion campaign. So first of all, you're gonna need a business account. So if you don't have one, you're gonna definitely need that. And then we're gonna go to ads and create ad. I already have a traffic campaign running, so we're just gonna go ahead and set up a conversion campaign. We're gonna give it a name. So you're gonna give it whatever name you want it to be. I always go really broad with this just to tell me what the actual campaign is. So this is gonna be a Pinterest webinar sales. Continue, ad groups are gonna be a little bit different. I like to name my ad groups based on what each ad group is doing. So you'll see me if I just type in cold, you'll see that I run cold phrase match, broad match keywords. Um, maybe I'm gonna run an interest campaign. So this can be a cold interests. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select whatever interests are going to be in the campaign. Now, typically I do this based on my actual Pinterest analytics, not just based on whatever interests I think that I want to target. So I always go to audience insights if I'm running an interest-based campaign and I like to look at the affinity for my audience. So what affinity and what um, categories are they interested in based on my audience? People who have engaged with my pins in the last 30 days. So it's education, entertainment, home decor, DIY, and art. So if you wanted to select those, entertainment and home decor. Now you can select more than five. Um, I typically go with five um, when I'm starting a new broad interest campaign. My Pinterest ad rep has always said start with at least five. So if you want to select all, that's that's beautiful too, right? So just go ahead and do that. And then if you're using keywords, you put them in here and then we are going to get down to the nitty gritty. If you know, like I have a client that we run conversion campaigns for them and we target only unspecified and female. We don't target any men at all because men don't actually perform within her campaigns at all because her clients and the people looking for her are female. Um, ages, if you are doing age-restricted advertising, obviously you need to check this box. Otherwise, I like to leave it open until my campaign has enough data that I can actually narrow down. 
locations if you're targeting in other countries. Otherwise, I just leave that checked for all US. So these are the other countries that you can target, just so you know. You can also target based on postal code if you are doing a local campaign, which is pretty nifty. Languages, I always leave all. Devices, I leave all until I have more information at least. And then um, ad group placement, I usually use all as well. And if you'd like to use ad group tracking URLs, obviously you have that option here. And that's usually third party. I don't do anything with that. You can use your pin to expand your targeting. I typically leave this on until my campaign has some more information. And then based on how my campaign is doing, I may come in and turn this off. Now we're down to your daily budget. What I'm going to do is actually set my daily budget. So we're going to do a $10 per day budget, which means if you were listening in the video that my checkout needs to be a dollar. Now you can do a couple things here. You can use automatic, which is brand new. And I haven't tested this as much as I would like to, to be able to give you good information on this. So I always just start with custom and I like to do 10 to 20 times. My budget is going to be 10 to 20 times my CPA bid. So this is your paying for the impression on your ad. I always do standard and then my conversion window is this teeny tiny little box at the bottom. You can very easily miss this. It's automatically set to 30, 30, 30. But if you drop this down, you can see the ones that you can actually set the campaign for. And then inside your analytics, you can see recording based on a lot of a wider conversion setting. So you can see all of these. There's more in there. Now, I always start with just 30, 30, 30. And then what I like to do is just come in here and choose whatever pins that I'm going to promote. So whatever I'm promoting in my conversion campaign, you can choose more than one. So I'm going to choose these three and then hit launch and you will see your campaign go live. It'll be in here waiting approval. It'll say active on the campaign level. But if you click into the ad group, uh, it may very well also say active. And then in here, there's not going to be anything because they are waiting for approval. So if you check this box, if you don't see anything here, drop this down and check pending. And you'll see that these ads are pending now for conversion campaign. And that's it. That is your conversion campaign setup. I'm sorry if that was a lot. So a couple notes before we sign off. There are a few links in the description below. First of all, there's a link to the traffic campaign video. Second of all, there's a link to the blog post that corresponds with this. Third, if you would like to run low cost promoted pins on your own, then check out the pin practical promotions link in the description. It's the course I learned to run promoted pins on. Third or fourth, I guess, fourth. <laughs> Our team actually helps clients to run promoted pin campaigns. So if you'd like to apply to work with us, the, the link is in the description below. And that's pretty much it. That's all of the notes at the end of the video. If you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, we actually publish weekly content all about Pinterest marketing to help you to be a better marketer on Pinterest. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Of course, again, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Ciao.